Good morning. Good morning, Sister Media World. How are you doing? Hope that this Friday finds you safe, well, in hearing from the Ruach HaKadosh. I was just meditating, praying and meditating when I woke up this morning, and Yah led me to 1 Samuel 28. And when I tell you this chapter is so rich in revelation, you need to crack open your word. 1 Samuel 28, powerful. Y'all looking for witches. Where's the witch? She's at Endor. Now, we all know about the story of the witch at Endor. Saul, who was king, was leading Israel, and he was seeking a word from Yah because he had a fight on his hands. He was in a war. He was about to come up against the Philistines. And he went before Yah and prayed and cried. Yah wasn't speaking to him anymore because Yah had already made up his mind that David was the chosen one. Okay? But he wasn't speaking to Saul anymore. And no matter how much Saul sought the Lord, Yah would not speak to him. So Saul, before he went to battle, because he knew he had a fight on his hand, sought the witch at Endor. Samuel had died, the prophet Samuel, who had prophesied beforehand and spoken the word that brought Saul forth. Samuel was gone. The prophet Samuel was dead. And it's, it was just a real hot mess in Israel. And you just have to read it. It's so amazing. First Samuel 28 and 3. Now Samuel died, and all Israel mourned him, and they buried him in Ramah in his own city. Saul removed all the mediums and the necromancers from the land. So Yah still used Saul, even though Saul, Yah had made up his mind that Saul was about to go. He still used Saul. He used them to get rid of the mediums and the necromancers. I don't know if you know what necromancers are. Necromancers are people that seek after the spirits of dead people. You have to be very careful when you are dealing with the dead. In particular, the spirits of the dead. Our people are very, very spiritual. And unfortunately, what happens amongst our people is that Instead of seeking the Ruach HaKadosh for instruction and for guidance and for counsel and for strategies, for whatever reason, if we don't believe that we're hearing from Yah or Yah speaks, but we don't like what he's saying, then our people go off into necromancy and seeking mediums and seeking psychics and pulling on ancestral spirits. And in the church, they call it all. Oh, Seeking the mantle of such and such and such dead ones that were used mightily in past revivals in the church. I'm about to show you right here in 1 Samuel 28 where all of that is denounced by Yah. Okay? Even the seeking of mantles. Watch. Then the Philistines, I'm on chapter, I'm on. 1 Samuel 28, verse 4. Then the Philistines gathered themselves together, and they came and camped. Saul gathered all Israel together, and they camped in Gilboa. When Saul saw the camp of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled. Saul inquired of the Lord, but the Lord did not answer him by dreams, by lots, or by prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, Seek for me a woman who is a medium, that I may go to her and inquire of her. So he was like, go give me the witch. Y'all not speaking to me anymore. So I'm, I'm going to pull on the ancestral spirits. Um, I'm going to seek the mantle of Catherine Kuhlman or A.A. A. Allen or past people that Yah used. And so his servant said to him, there is a woman medium in Endor. So wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold up. In verse, th verse 3, Samuel got rid of the mediums. But then in verse 4, 
because he got afraid in his heart and y'all wasn't speaking to him anymore. He went and got the medium. All right. I'm on verse 8. So Saul disguised himself, put on other clothes, and he went with two of his men. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, please divine for me by a spirit and bring up for me whom I will name to you. Whoa, hold up. So Saul, he didn't, he didn't even go seek the counsel of the, of the medium, of the witch, as himself. He had to disguise himself. He pretended to be one of the soldiers. He acted like he was one of the dudes. So, okay. Verse 9. The woman said to him, listen. You know what Saul has done. How he has eliminated the mediums and necromancers from the land. Now, why are you laying up a trap for my life to cause my death? So guess what? The woman wasn't stupid. She was like, yo, you know that's all killing people off. Why are you, why are you pulling on me? Saul swore to her by the Lord. As the Lord lives, no punishment will happen to you for this thing. She secretly knew that was Saul. Even though he tried to act like he was a soldier. He was in disguise. But she knew who he was. I'm going to leave that right there. Then said the woman, whom shall I bring up for you? And Saul said, bring up Samuel for me. Now I'm going to stop right there because I'm going to stay there for a little bit. Samuel, he wanted her to pull up the spirit of Samuel. Samuel was a prophet in Israel. This is modern day, the same equivalent to people going to church and going to these ministries and going to these conferences talking about Oh, well, somebody has to pick up the mantle of so-and-so-and-so-and-so. Pick up the mantle of Or Roberts. Pick up the mantle of A.A. A. Allen. Pick up the mantle of William Seymour. Pick up the mantle of Charles Parham. And, and look, Saul pretty much is telling her, I want to pick up the mantle of Samuel. But isn't that necromancy? First Samuel 28. Read it for yourself. Study it. Just because it sounds good and you're trying to get pick, pick up the spirit of somebody else who y'all may have used to bring victory to a people in the past, once a person is dead, you need to leave them alone. You need to leave their spirit alone. That is necromancy. I don't care if it is the it's, it's the Pope. I'm seeking the spirit of the Pope. You better leave him in the ground. Stop, 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 stop. Y'all need to stop messing with the spirit realm. For real, for real. If it is not the Holy Ghost, it is not the Ruach HaKodesh, you need to leave it alone. Real talk. Anyway. Verse 12. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice. And the woman said to Saul, why have you deceived me? For you are Saul. I told you that she knew who he was. The king said to her, do not be afraid. What did you see? And the woman said to Saul, I saw a divine being ascending out of the earth. And he said to her, what is his appearance? I mean, a, 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 a seance, y'all. And she said, an old man is coming up and he is covered with a robe. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And he kneeled with his face to the ground and bowed to himself. Samuel said to Saul, why have you roused me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am greatly distressed for the Philistines make war against me. And God has departed from me and does not answer me any longer by prophets or by dreams. Therefore, I have called you that you might make known to me what I should do. Now check it, even though he was still acting out of necromancy, he was tapping into a familiar spirit. He was trying to go into the spirit realm by illegal means. Y'all still spoke to him. And people say, well, this is that Satan, it must not be bad. And no, that's not what that means. 
That don't mean that that's a, a green light for you to go into the spirit realm by illegal means. That is not a green light for you to tap into ancestral spirits. That is not a green light for you to go and pull on and to go try to pull on the mantle of other people that Yah has used in the past. When Yah is done using somebody, he's done using somebody. People say, oh, well, you know, we, we just got this bad habit of throwing people away. No, you're looking at it and perceiving it the wrong way. When Yah uses someone, he uses them, and then he puts them on the side. He might use them later on, or he may never use them again. The prophet Jonah, he only had one sermon. Don't get me started. Yeah, I'm, I'm already there. The prophet Jonah was a prophet. And Yah used him. But guess what? He only had one message to deliver. He only had one assignment. And when he was done with Jonah, he was done with Jonah. And guess what? He still took care of Jonah after don't, Jonah did what he said that Yah told him to do. I don't know where people get this thing from that, oh, once Yah use you, that he's required to keep using a person no he's not required to do anything this all belongs to yah yah is in control he does who what he wants when he wants through whom he wants how he wants to and if he decides hey he could say this one person i'm going to use one time he's going to use them one time and that does not mean that they did something wrong that does not mean that they're in sin it does not mean that they are backslidden that means they had one assignment they had one message and that was it that was yah's purpose for their lives and it may be that yah may use us, use someone else 20 times what is this what is this the reason why people start pulling on other spirits to try to win the war is because they don't un recognize and understand that when their time is up, when Yah is done using you, you need to sit down and say, thank you, Yah, I appreciate and give you glory for give, for you wanting to use me this one time, for wanting to use me two times or however many times he uses you. If he uses you one time and sits you down, baby, that don't mean he loves you any less than the one, the one he seems to be using a hundred times. Because see, when you start trying to make things happen that y'all ain't ordained to happen, this is when you get off into witchcraft. Because you're trying to make it happen. You're trying to control it. You're trying to manipulate don't do that. Anyway, so, then Samuel said, verse 16, why then do you ask me since the Lord has departed from you and has become your enemy? The Lord has done for himself as he spoke by me. The Lord has torn the kingdom from your hand and has given it to your neighbor, David. See, when you start trying to do things your way, then you then you become an enemy of Yah. It ain't that you're an enemy of Yah if Yah don't use you no more. No, 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 no. You're an enemy of Yah when you start trying to do things your way and be a disobedient to Yah. Then you're an enemy. Verse 18, as you did not obey the voice of the Lord, and did not carry out his fierce wrath against Amalek. Therefore, the Lord has done this thing to you this day. You see, Yah had given Saul instructions on how to deal with his enemies. And he did not obey Yah. So then Yah said, oh, okay, I'm taking the kingdom from you and I'm giving it to another. Because you're doing it your way. You're not listening to me. Verse 19, and moreover, the Lord will deliver Israel with you into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. The Lord will also deliver the army of Israel into the hands of the Israelites. Oh, so, so, so Saul, Saul pulled up the spirit of Samuel, <laughs> and he got a word of judgment. Y'all better be careful in pulling on them ancestral spirits. Y'all better be careful on trying to go and pick up some mantle of a dead man or woman of God. Y'all better be careful with that. Because, see, when them spirits come out, them spirits, y'all will use them same spirits to pronounce judgment on you. You better be careful. You better go study 1 Samuel 28 again. Verse 20, Saul immediately fell full length upon the ground. Because he greatly feared the words of Samuel. 
Also, there was no strength in him, for he had eaten no bread all day and all night. Let me tell y'all something. We have a war on our hands, but we have to fight Yah's way. Not our way, Yahweh. You caught that? And we can't venture off into this illegal spiritual realm. We can't do that because we're trying to make stuff happen. We need to trust Yah that he's in control and that he is the commander in chief. And that when you follow his instructions, you will win the war. You will get your deliverance. You will reach the promised land. But you got to do it his way. His way, baby. You got to do it his way. Or you're going to end up like Saul. Y'all know what happened with Saul? Saul committed suicide. His sons died in the battle. All because Saul wanted to do things his way. Go read that for yourself. Don't just take my word for it. I'm reading straight from the scripture. And y'all saw, dropped that in my spirit this morning. And I was like, whoa. So there it is. You looking for the witch? The witch at Endor. The witch is at your place of unbelief and disobedience. The witch is at the place where you made the decision that you wasn't going to trust the Yah, that you wasn't going to trust the Ruach HaKadosh anymore, but that you was going to trust another spirit. That's where the witch at. Y'all have a great day.